Hi folks, Dale Hayner with Ontario to Doors Magazine. If you own a cargo trailer, or especially a boat trailer, certainly you come across the instances where you've been broke down the side of the road. If it's a flat tire, it's not too bad. If it's something to do with the trailer bearings, the wheel bearings, the axle bearings, then you got trouble. It's really not that complicated of a deal to put new trailer bearings in or even inspect them before every trip you go out. Paul Tremblay, his family has owned and operated a trailer manufacturing and repair business for quite a number of years. He's going to take us through the process of how to inspect and how to change boat trailer bearings. We're going to chalk the op opposing tire that we're working on with wheel chocks just so that the trailer doesn't rock back and forth. The next thing we're going to do is jack up the axle on the tire side that we want to be working on. And then we let the jack rest down on top of the safety stand. There we go. Paul's going to give the boat a little shake and make sure it's steady. Yeah, we're good to go. Because Paul's got quite an organized workshop here, he does have an air compressor and an air impact tool to remove lug nuts off the tires. If you're using just a lug wrench before you jack the trailer up, you might want to loosen the lugs. Don't take them right off, you just want to crack them so that when you jack the trailer up, you'll be able to more easily take the lug nuts off, okay? We're going to use air because it's available. There, now that the tire's off, we've exposed the hub and the end of the axle. Like I said, we do have a bearing buddy attached to this rather than just a dust cap. It just makes it simpler when you want to apply packing grease. You can do it through a little grease fitting on the end rather than having to take the dust cover off and actually pack grease in by hand. Go ahead. Now that the bearing body or the dust cap is off, we've exposed the crown nut and the cotter pin. And it's jam-packed full of grease, which is a good thing you want it to be, so long as it ain't leaking out. To remove the cotter pin, just need a simple pair of needle nose pliers and a wrench, preferably even an adjustable wrench, just to take the crown nut off the end of the axle. It's the crown nut that keeps the whole entire bearing system in place. Okay? Very important. So after you take the cotter pin out, take a retaining washer off, and then the crown nut can be taken off. As you can see, the crown nut itself is not in there extremely tight. It's not supposed to be very tight. All it's doing is applying slight pressure onto the bearing assembly to keep everything in place. Now the crown nut is off, we've got a spacer washer. It's easily removed. It just sits in there on a little key. Paul is now going to take the whole hub assembly off slowly and then push it back in a little bit and expose the outer bearing. And it easily comes out. Everything just sits in there and it's all tightened together with that crown nut. You want to look to make sure that there's no corrosion on the rollers and you want to make sure that it's nice and tight as you can see it's it's not very loose and it doesn't shake side to side, just very slightly. If you get a really bad one, these rollers are actually pop right out of the cage. And this, when you pull this hub off, you'll actually have the rollers land right on the floor in your hand. So you want to make sure there's no indications of uh, heat damage. The roller cage is intact with the rollers and that there's not excessive play. Now that he's got the outer set of bearings, there's also an inner set of bearings on the back end of the hub on the axle. I'm going to take the whole hub assembly off. Once you have the end of the axle exposed, clean it all off of any grease and grime, inspect it, check the threads, 
Make sure there's no burring on the thread, threads and there's no rust on the end of the axle. And that one's actually in very good shape. Now what we're looking at here is the back end of the hub and you can see the inner, the back end of the inner, the back end of the inner bearing, he's turning it there right now. There is a grease seal on the back of the hub that needs to come off enable for it to enable you to pull that bearing assembly out. It's easily done with a pry bar. You're going to mess up the outer bearing or the outer grease seal. Once you pop the grease seal, it's not any good anymore. You're going to have to replace that. Now he's exposed and taken out the inner bearing assembly. Once again, he's going to inspect it over for any damage, any rust, make sure it's tight. And that one looks pretty good again. And he's going to clean, he's just cleaning all the grease out now of the, out of the hub so we can have a look at and inspect the races, the bearing races. Now what the manufacturers suggest, he's touching the race there right now, what the manufacturers request is that if you need to replace your bearing for any reason, replace this race as well. And it just pops out from the opposite side. There's two races, one for each bearing assembly, and they are a different size. So don't be mixing up your front and your rear bearing assemblies. When the uh, bearings come new in the box, they're coated with a thin, thin film of oil just to keep them from corroding in the package. So what you're going to want to do is pack the bearings with grease. So you just take a liberal amount and fill all the voids and all the uh, cracks and crevices. Roll it around on the rollers and get it in there so it's nice and full of grease before you uh, put it back into the hub. Good. When you install your bearing back into the hub, I like to put a little grease around the outside so it's going to fill any, any uh, spots that may be missed. Once you get that full of grease, you take your new uh, oil seal you can put a little grease that's left over on your fingers around the outside just to make it uh, go in a little bit easier. Set it into the opening. And then just lightly tap it with a hammer. Once you get the oil seal seated into position, you'll feel it bottom out. That'll stop your inner bearing from coming off. You're going to reinstall your hub. Once you install your hub back on the axle, you're going to want to apply some grease into that space. Now, if you haven't cleaned out the inside of the hub, you're going to have a fair amount of grease still in there, but you need to add a little bit more so that it's fairly full of grease on the inside. You take your packed outer bearing, packed with grease, install it back onto the spindle. Just slides in? Slides right in just like that and seats on the race. And you'll see how everything turns nice and smooth in there. The spacer washer, you'll find the tab fits into the little channel on the spindle. Reinstall the crown nut. Snug it up just so it's nice and and snug. It doesn't have to be real tight. What Paul's going to do now is he's going to do a process called preloading the bearings. Once you get your tire back on, as you notice there's only two lug nuts on here just to hold the tire on so we can spin it. You're going to want to spin your tire and tighten that crown nut. You'll notice the tire gets a little harder to spin but what's happening right now is those bearings are seating themselves in the races and finding their, their favorite spot. Once you get that crown nut tightened down and the wheel's fairly hard to spin now, it won't spin on its own, you really got to make it spin. You're going to want to take that crown nut and back it off. Now you're going to loosen it. Notice how the tire is spinning a little bit more freely. 
Start with a backing it off a quarter turn. Now you'll see the tire spinning nice and free. When you install new bearing assemblies and new races, Paul, uh, will they loosen up over time? They could find a different seating position once you put some kilometers on going down the road. Mm -hmm. So you're going to want to check your tire and your bearings after anywhere from 50 to 200 kilometers, the same way we did before. By shaking it? By shaking the tire, mm -hmm. by looking for any grease that escapes, and for any heat uh, damage that you might notice. Okay, and then you might have to take your dust cover back off. You might have to take reloading. the dust cover back off, and you might have to readjust that crown nut, tighten it down a little bit more. Just like again. what you did now. Just like okay. what I did now. But now you'll see that it's nice and free, and that crown nut is just like we found it. It's just basically finger tight. Once you get the crown nut backed off, you're going to want to put your retainer washer back on. And as you'll notice with these teeth, they have to line up with the hole in the spindle. So you're just going to want to spin it until you can find that hole within the teeth. As you'll see with the cotter pin, it's fairly bent up. And the problem with using an old cotter pin is once it's bent, it's weakened at that spot. You should never ever reuse a cotter pin. You're always going to want to get a new one and with the kits that usually comes with it, if not, just pick some up at your local hardware store. You're going to want to take your new cotter pin and slip it through the hole in the spindle. And be aware that this cotter pin has to be inside of where your dust cap goes, otherwise you won't be able to get your dust cap back on. Good point. You bring it all the way down to where it stops, and then you're just going to bend it back up. Make sure you tuck it away nice and close so it doesn't interfere with the dust cap or your bearing buddy. Now you're either going to reinstall your dust cap or your bearing buddy, whichever your trailer has. And it's the same idea as with the oil seal. To start it, just get it in there and tap it nice and lightly. Now if you have a set of bearing buddies, you're going to want to top it up with grease. You'll need a grease gun for this application because the bearing buddies come with a greaser. We'll set this one to 80 pounds. It just adjusts turning? Yeah. This, this particular model, it just basically turns to adjust your, your torque and shows the values on the side of the wrench. So all you have to do is put that on your, on your lug nut and you're going to turn it just like a regular ratchet. And once it reaches 80 pounds per square inch, the, the wrench itself is going to make a clicking noise, like it's giving away. That means you've reached 80 pounds. Thank you very much, hope you enjoyed it, hope you learned something.